Phil, what is it like to run a world-famous family business? It's a combination of a, <clears throat> a great honor and uh, quite a lot of pressure, naturally. Yeah. Uh, there's five generations that uh, I represent the oldest of the fifth generation. So, you know, all the hard work that my grandfather and my second great-grandfather, my dad, my uncle, my aunt, and everybody put into it, it's the pressure to continue to perform. You know, we do have, we are producing live performances using explosives, so the pressures are, are probably the, the most thing I could summarize it is really is there's, there's an extreme amount of pressure, but there's a tremendous amount of enjoyment and satisfaction in, in producing and, and envisioning something and see it come to fruition. And now with my, with my, ki my, my son and my, my nephew and my daughter, and other members of the family representing the sixth generation. Wow. It's really an honor when you look at them being active and you say, you know, I've got that responsibility to bring the business now into the sixth generation. Very few family businesses get to the third generation sure. even. Uh, but the pressure never goes away. Is that the pressure to sell and grow the business or the pressure to, pr pressure to have the fireworks go off? It's multiple pressures. One is yeah, naturally is to, to keep the business viable, keep right. the business um, successful. The pressures that we also have is on the performance side. Uh, we don't get an opportunity to rehearse like you do a lighting show. We can't shoot the show and make the changes. And then added to that, we have a live audience and we're dealing with explosives. Our medium, our performance medium is explosive. So you're constantly, and we have a manufacturing firm also, that we have 160 families that, that rely on the success of that factory to, to operate safely. So it's, it's a combination of pressures that come all into a melting pot. And maybe that's the reason why my hairline is where it is. But, you know, certain people take different pressures a different way. I get energized by the pressure. You know, certainly sometimes when you're on these very, very large performances and you've got hundreds of thousands of people waiting for you to push that proverbial go button, the pressure on that is tremendous, but it's, it's a peak type of a pressure. But then you give out the everyday pressure of running the business. So it's a combination of it, but like I said, it's the rewards certainly outweigh and, and have you wake up in the morning waiting for the next challenge and, and wanting to get up to, and get into the studio and, and move to that next performance. So it's showbiz. As, it's showbiz. It's a business that is showbiz. Yeah, very do you much actually on, very press, much the do you... Side. Phil, pr actually press a button to start the show like you just did? Some of our performances, the larger ones, all come back to the ultimate push the play button. Some of them are automated to the extent that it's running off of a clock, a GPS clock, and it starts at a specific time. The technology has now brought, brought our, our medium, our art form, to a point where it's just unlimited on, on where you can perform from simultaneously all at the same time or not. So it is, a, in many cases, it is a push of the button. And I could tell you, I've always wanted to strap a heart monitor on myself right before one of these big performances to see where, you know, where my body functions are. But when you push that button and you see that first firework launch, the relief that you experience is unbelievable. It's like NASA launching you know, the rockets. I've often thought about that as what type of industry or art form or performance form has the pressures that we have. Even a performer coming out of stage to sing, and I'm not demeaning this, but you, know, you have an opportunity to rehearse, and you know pretty much what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen, but you've got that element of not being able to rehearse. Right. So, so it's, it's completely different. I can't find that equivalent, and the only one I, would, I was able to come up with is, is launching, a, launching a rocket you know, with a human inside or humans inside of it. But that even, that even goes down to a whole bunch of people that are doing a, a whole bunch of things, and if there's a failure, there's a, there's a big, big team that's looked at. In this case, many of times we're sitting right next to our client and we have the authorities on one side and the client on the other side and when you push that button and that show has to happen, the tremendous pressure that you experience until that first shell launches is, uh, is overwhelming sometimes. And, and then it's now in the modern day somewhat programmed. You're not pressing a button for every single firework that we no, see. No, no, they're all, mo most of the performances uh, high 90 percentile in our, in, our, um, in our repertoire of different size performances are automated. So you're pushing the button and then there's a, the equivalent of an Excel macro happening that tells what the computer goes out and finds certain modules that are out in the field and fires them in certain sequences. And when you're sitting there with your client and the VIPs who may be presidents or prime ministers or kings, or kings. 
How far away are you from the launcher? Generally, I'm a, a pretty good distance away from it because we, we're in a location where you're bringing all the other elements of the event together. So we're at what we call show control. And then a thousand feet or more away is the, is the stage that we're performing the fireworks from. So we're sending signals out wirelessly. But it is controlled. The go queue is controlled from that staging, that, that uh, show control location. This is so interesting, but I want to get to the business aspect as well. Um, are you still trying to grow the business or sustain it? Or what, what are you doing business-wise? Well, we're definitely sustaining it. And we're, we're experiencing unprecedented growth within the really? company because we've expanded into certain into, into newer markets that are, that are ex exceeding our expectations on what they were projected to be. For example, the Middle East, uh, our business, uh, typically was 4th of July was 70% of our overall revenue on the fireworks side. Um, now it's on the, on the 4th of July, it's about 40%. And New Year's Eve has become our second big bell curve throughout our year in revenues and displays. Uh, we also divested, diversified our company and 60% of our revenues is actually on the manufacturing of the Department of Defense materials, training devices and certain uh, components for munitions. So we have a factory down in Virginia. We have 165 employees down there to manufacture explosives for the DOD. And, and for them to practice on or shoot at or learn to deactivate Most or what? of it is training. Most of it is a, a simulated hand grenade, for example, or a simulated uh, incoming ground bomb coming so in. So you make munitions then for the Pentagon that don't go off? We make munitions <laughs> that go off, but they're not lethal. Oh, so they'll okay. make the bang, they'll have the timing delay, they'll have the smoke or the flash, but it won't have the lethality of, of the shrapnel and things like that, such as a hand grenade simulator. These are made by Grucci as yeah, well? made by Fireworks. It's actually a division, of another company of ours, Pyrotechnique by Grucci, that uh, is in Virginia. We have a factory in upstate New York, and the larger portion of the factory is down in uh, southern Virginia on, on an arsenal on the Radford Army Ammunition Plant, where we have a long-term lease with the Army to utilize that facility that would otherwise be mothballed and not being used. Now, I looked on your website, which is very interesting to take a look at if anyone wants to look at, both in terms of fireworks and in business diversification. But I looked at your upcoming events, and you had events all over New Jersey, Connecticut, New York. I mean, not just the Boston Pops, right. so you must have Dozens of crews? We have a little under 500 pyrotechnicians <clears throat> that my nephew, Corey, will do all, mostly all the scheduling and move those people in the right places and get them to the right locations. And we, use, we utilize just under 500 pyrotechnicians that are all trained as, as both uh, part-time and full-time to display fireworks on the 4th of July from here to as far west as Hawaii out to Honolulu. We produce uh, per the fireworks in Pearl Harbor in, uh, on Hawaii, on uh, Honolulu, and uh, also uh, Schofield Barracks for the Army, and 65 shows in between. Now, do, you, do they go out in a trailer truck, with a trailer truck yes. full of explosives that may not, I might not recognize on the, on the road well, next to me? Well, you recognize it, because it has to clearly oh, identify right. our company name, says Fireworks oh, it, by Gucci, it does. It has our DOT registration number, and it also has a placard on it yeah. that indicates the commodity that's inside the truck, 1.3 explosives, for example. Right. Um, but it's also, depending on where it is, the market, for example, out in Hawaii, we already shipped a container out there of all the 4th of July performances, so it's... It's already sitting there now in our bunker in, uh, on Oahu, on the island of Oahu. Our Las Vegas container left two weeks ago, and it's out in Las Vegas now, and our bunker's out in Henderson, Nevada. So You're doing have, something for Celine Dion or something, are you? That's coming up next week for her last her farewell uh, performance at Caesars Palace. So we'll be perf performing on the roof of Caesars Palace, and she'll be there with her, her closest friends and family, and, and we'll have a beautiful pyrotechnic the display for at the end. And you'll be there? Will I will, you be there? I'll the be there with my mom and my wife, Debbie. My mother's a big fan of Celine Dion, so we'll be there and uh, we'll, we'll enjoy the honor. Again, we, with the beauty of our, our art form and our performances is we're always at a celebration. Even a funeral in some cases, we're at a funeral and, and they, whoever the 
unfortunately, the person that's deceased, they contract us to be available for a fireworks show to celebrate their lives. So do you have sales reps who go out on sales calls? How, how did, how's your sales so operation work? Most of our business development comes from, um, from word of mouth and a performance that somebody may see. If it's a private performance, it's someone that somebody sees a fireworks show and says, I want one of those, who did that? And then we'll get the phone call because they'll, they'll do the research. Or it's a municipal type of performance. But we really don't have, we have people that manage our business development as the requests for quotations and requests for creative briefs come in. We do quite a lot of that. You have offices in uh, several places, right? Uh, several our, our main or, studio is right here on Long Island. But we have you have people, people around the country and around the world who you rely on? Not to sell. No, or not, oh, not to sell. Right out of here, out of New York. Oh, wow. All of, the, uh, all of the inquiries, naturally some of them get funneled through our website for some of the municipal and smaller performances. Yeah. And many of them will get a phone call directly from the, the assistant of uh, you know, Sheikh Mohammed in Dubai, for example, or somebody from Russia Kamar or Saudi Arabia, high-level personnel will contact us, give us, give us the uh, scope of work and what the performance is about, and ask us for a creative brief and a budget. You were telling me uh, before we started, though, that uh, there's one little um, uh, obligation that you have in closing deals. They want. Well, they, they don't want to deal yeah, with the, the sales rep. The thing that I've, that I've, <laughs> I still believe very much in is the power to be able to be in front of the customer and shake that hand. They want to meet Grucci. They want to have a Grucci person that's sitting there, somebody, a member of the family, basically providing that guarantee that what we're saying in paper and and what's beautifully shown on Photoshop and the animation comes to reality. It's you can't like, delegate being a Grucci. I mean, you can't. <laughs> you know, it's very difficult. And frankly, I enjoy that. You know, right. I enjoy representing the family. And certainly, because I do a lot of the design, most of the design on the bigger performances, you go to the site to see what the stage is. You understand what the reality of what you can perform, what you can deliver, before you actually open your mouth and tell them you can do something. You want to get there and understand what the field is, what the what the challenges are going to be. So you travel a lot of days a year. 60% or so more. More than half. Yeah, and right. it's, it's because, because also the travel down to the factory in Virginia oh, okay. and upstate New York and then going out and representing the family. So I bet that your great-grandfather and grandfather and father are never far from your mind as no, you run this business day. now. Un unfortunately, I, I lost my dad to this business. In 1983, we had... Um, the only industrial accident that we had in the history of our family, and it took my dad, took his life and my cousin. So there's not a day that goes by that I don't either think of him personally and inspire from him and my grandfather, but I also think of him and what he, you know, what he experienced and, and what that means to our family to make sure that that never happens again, and part back to the pressures that I have and the rest of the family has. Um, you know, that's the part that every single day you think about that. You're manufacturing, you're handling explosives. It's not, um, we're not distributing sneakers or gloves. So that part of it, although the entertainment part and the creative part is what energizes you, you continuously remind yourself of the commodity and the medium that you're working with. Phil Grucci, happy 4th of July yeah, and God bless you. America. Thank you. God bless America, is right. Happy 4th of July to you too.